Thank you for joining us in our continuing series on tourism and culture. Our special today is on the Dominican Republic and our guest is His Excellency Ellis Perez, former Minister of Tourism of the Dominican Republic and also a celebrity TV host. He'll share his thoughts on tourism, past, present and future following these messages. With us now is Minister of Tourism, Mr. Ellis Perez. Mr. Perez, it's a real pleasure to finally meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, Richard. It's a, it's a great pleasure. I didn't know of your show, but I have seen that it's a very popular one. It reaches about 40 million homes in the United States. Approximately, yes. It doesn't mean 40 million people watch, but the exposure is really good, and our key station is ABC TV 25 in Palm Beach. I'm a former ABC man. <laughs> Just amazing. Actually, your credentials, all the things you have done throughout your career is absolutely astonishing. It's not a contest, but I'm very impressed with all that you've done. You've served as Minister of Tourism right here of, in the Dominican Republic. You are a famous, maybe the most famous communicator. And uh, I just noticed, I just noticed that yesterday's newspaper here in the Dominican Republic, the list in Diario on this page right here, is your picture. Yes. Pictured here with President Bush. It brings me back, Richard, to 1981. I was director of the Dominican Tourist Office in New York. At the same time, I was minister counselor of the Dominican Permanent Mission to the UN, to the United Nations. And I got a call from Santo Domingo. And it was the Minister of Tourism calling me uh, to tell me that the day before they had decided in the palace that uh, President Bush, Vice President then, uh, George W. Bush, was coming on a visit to the Dominican Republic, Colombia, and Brazil. And they had a request from the State Department that indicated that they wanted each country to appoint an interviewer, a television interviewer, to come to Washington and do an interview to the vice president in order to promote his upcoming visit to each country. So I was elected to do that. They gave me the name and the telephone number of the secretary to, to Vice President Bush. So I came to the White House, I identified myself, and they brought me into the vice presidential office. I met Mr. Bush then, and I did him the interview. So we talked, I said, uh, have you ever been to the Dominican Republic? He said, no, but you know what? My roommate at Yale was a Dominican, who I understand later became the foreign minister of the Dominican Republic, uh, Manuel Tavares. And I said, certainly, I know Manuel Tavares. Uh, so he said, he was not only my friend, and uh, we were both in the same school, but he was my roommate, so give him my best regards when you get back. So I came back, the uh, interview was shown on the American television, 
as promotion for his upcoming arrival. And about uh, a couple of months later, the then president Antonio Guzman named me Minister of Tourism. So about five or seven days later, I got a telegram from the White House. It was the Vice President, George W. Bush, congratulating me for having been appointed Minister of Tourism, which surprised me very nicely. Of course, very nice, how very kind of them. So yes. I thanked him, and uh, when he announced he would run for the presidency through the American Embassy here in Santo Domingo, I sent him my best wishes for him to succeed in his ambition. And uh, of course, the rest was history. He became president, and, uh, and that was it. So I had this beautiful memory. So when he passed away last week, I looked for my photo old photograph that he dedicated to me, and I remember that interview. So I wrote this for the main paper, and it was published yesterday. And here it is in the most popular newspaper in the Dominican Republic. Right. How interesting connections and coincidences are. I just interviewed the new ambassador of the United States to the Dominican Republic, Ambassador Bernstein, with an incredible background. But anyway, I'd like you to share with our audience what is the importance of promoting tourism in this day and age? It is as simple as this. When President Medina, our current president, came into the head of government, one of the main things he did was uh, indicate that he thought tourism was the backbone of the Dominican economy. So he was going to focus on promoting tourism and do the best he could so that we would stay competitive and advance the more we could along the lines of being a successful destination in the Caribbean. And he has done so. So we have been progressing to the point that we are now the biggest uh, tourism destination of the Caribbean and Central America. And uh, we are only behind one of the two biggest uh, Latin American countries in general in number of uh, tourists we are receiving over we received last year in uh, 19 in 2017 over 6 million tourists uh, we are reaching almost 7 million this year uh, to, uh, 2018 and we received over 7 billion dollars last year uh, for tourism revenue so that gives you a sign of how important tourism is for the Dominican economy and for Dominican life as a whole. We, are, we have become number one. You would say, well, uh, what do you offer? What does the Dominican Republic have? That was my next question. What is unique um, about the Dominican Republic from a tourism point of view? I would say to the people of the north, people that have the cold weather at this time of the year, December, January, February, <clears throat> we have good weather year-round. So the weather, I would say, is uh, one of our main aspects. Number two would be the quality of our beaches. Our beaches are just beautiful. The water is normally nice and warm, nice to enjoy. And the third aspect is the Dominican people. We, as a whole, Dominicans are nice people, we are not complicated. We like to enjoy life. We smile uh, easily. And uh, maybe a case in point, if you would ask someone along the road, uh, do you know where this place is? They may say, oh, come on, I'll, I'll take you over there. And that's how Dominicans are. We are simple people, we are nice people, and we are open. There are some places and some islands uh, where people are more aloof, more distant, but we enjoy talking to foreigners and people that we don't know. We think it's an opportunity to make a new friend. I fully agree with you on your point of view there with regard to people being open and friendly. I'd like to ask you to share with our audience some of your amazing achievements in your career. Well, I don't know. It's difficult for one 
to uh, calibrate, indicate your own achievements. Normally that is done by other parties, other people. Uh, but I would say uh, one of the main values that I acquired when I, when I was a young man, you know, we speak Spanish here in the Dominican Republic, is that uh, a friend of mine was the son of a Puerto Rican mother and a Dominican father. And I once went to his home and his brother came through the living room going into the rest of the house. And when he stopped in the, in the living room, they started talking and I didn't understand. So when his brother finally went over to his destination in the house, I said, Michael, what were you talking? I didn't understand anything. So he said, well, you know, my mother is Puerto Rican, my father is a Dominican. So my mother insists that while we are at home, we speak English. And that's what we were speaking. Because elsewhere, we speak Spanish all the time. And then he told me the phrase that changed my life. He said, Ellis, if you would speak English, we would talk and no one would understand us. Like what happened when my brother <laughs> came in that you didn't understand. I said, really? So that moment I decided that I would learn English. And I went about learning English in different ways. And a year later I was on the radio doing your hit parade. You know, the seven top tunes of the week that was presented in the United States. And I did a version of that, doing the program in English. It was the first program done in English in the Dominican Republic, 1953. I was 17 years old. So that, uh, that was a great achievement for me to open a full life ahead of me because I spoke English and that made me different. And I would say uh, eventually I became a cruise director because I worked at one of the main hotels here and the ships came in and the cruise, I would fix some activities for the cruise director to bring his groups. So we became friends. So one day he said, you know, I need an assistant and you would be perfect because you speak the language, you." you know, uh, entertainment, and uh, would you be interested? I said, well, tell me more. Finally, I left the country and went with him. He said, in a year's time, you, you begin as my assistant, but I can make you a cruise director in one year's time. And it happened just like that. At 24 years old, I was the youngest cruise director on board any ship. We were cruising from Miami, to the Caribbean and part of South America. So at that time I said, what can I do with my experience having been a cruise director for four years, having seen many other uh, islands and countries and having met a lot of interesting people, what can I do that is not the regular thing that the other radio stations do? So one of the ideas that came to my mind, I said, gee, now we have Juan Marichal, Felipe Alou, Maria Alou, Julian Javier, Manny Jimenez, Ossie Virgil, already Dominican baseball players that were beginning to have distinguished careers in the major leagues. So I told a friend of mine uh, that I had worked with in my previous work as a, as a radio announcer, Billy Berroa, he was a play-by-play -play, uh, announcer, I said, Billy, what do you think if we would broadcast every day for certain a game in which there would be one of those players participating? And he, he responded to me, oh my goodness, can you figure out Juan Marichal every fourth day? Because at that time, pitchers came every, every fourth day. Now they do it every five days. So when he said that, I said, We'll do it. He said, we'll do it. How? I said, well, I don't know how at this point, but I'll find out and we'll do it. I went to the American Embassy, to the All-American uh, Cables office, RCA office downtown to see if they could help me, but they had no idea. So I said, if I go to New York, I think I'll find out. So I left for New York two days later. 
and I found out. And we did the games and that was tremendous. Absolutely amazing. The list of things you've done and the initiative and the creativity and the goodwill you've created personally, bringing cultures together and entertaining people, educating people, so positive, amazing. Thank you. I had an opportunity once when I was uh, directing the Dominican tourist office here, we had a counterpart office in New York and my counterpart there who was an Ecuadorian, who was a very good professional in the tourism area. He said, Ellis, uh, I have someone from NBC come and see me. And he said that next year, they will be celebrating the 200th anniversary of the American independence. That was going to, that was 1975. This was going to be 1976, the 200th anniversary of the American independence. So he said, the fellow from NBC said that besides seeing and projecting, capturing the images of how Americans celebrate such a, 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 an independence celebration as this, 200 years, they would like to see how the rest of the world would see that and maybe celebrate at some point. He said, if you come with some idea that may seem interesting, we will cover that from the Dominican Republic. So my counterpart said, well, my counterpart in Santo Domingo is a man related to television, so maybe he can think of something. So when I came back to New York, I met with a fellow from NBC, and he said, well, what would you do that would capture our attention in regards to this celebration? I said, all right, what do you think if we get our president, Joaquin Balaguer at the time, to hold a mass at the first cathedral of the Americas and invite the whole diplomatic corps to participate, headed, of course, by the, uh, by the American ambassador? Would you like that? He said, I'll buy that. So we did that. It became the first broadcast ever done from the Dominican Republic to be broadcast in a foreign place. And that was July the 4th, 1976. Outstanding, really amazing. I'd like us to continue, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. We are back with Minister of Tourism, Mr. Ellis Perez. Sir, I'd like to ask you to share with our audience also the fact that you were a correspondent of NBC here in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, actually it was for ABC. When we had the revolution in 1965, uh, Marin Seigal came from New York representing ABC News, but he didn't speak Spanish. He didn't know the place. So he went to the American embassy. He said, I, would, I think I need someone who is bilingual, knows the places, and can help me out to produce my reports to ABC. So in the American embassy, they, of course, they knew of me. So they called me, Ellis, this, is, this fellow is looking. So uh, would you meet with him? I said, certainly, why not? So I went to the Embajador Hotel where he was staying. And he said, I must make you uh, a little test. In New York, they will hear you, and they, will, they are the ones that will decide whether I take you on or not. So I said, OK. He said, figure out that Fidel Castro has just been assassinated, and you are going to report on that. OK, Fidel Castro has just been assassinated. So he gave me paper and, and, and pen. When I was going to begin to write, he said, must be in English, of course, and it has to be under 40 seconds. I said, a story like that, that would have so many different points attached in 40 seconds or less? He said, yes because if it reaches 40 seconds, there's a supervisor that will 
that will stop it. And if the supervisor is not paying attention, a machine will cut it off. So I had to write it maybe seven or eight times to put it into the less than 40 second uh, uh, time frame. So I did. So I was hired. So I served ABC for 25 years, from 65 to 1990. I resigned then because I was hired by the hotel industry as president, first founding president of the Tourism Promotion Council. Right here in the Dominican Republic, yes? Here in the Dominican Republic. And maybe something that I should point out is that in 1977, uh, Miss Universe was held here in Santo Domingo, in the Dominican Republic. And uh, I was then director of the Dominican Tourist Information Center in the colonial sector. And uh, myself and the director of tourism, the official director of tourism at the time, were both invited to come to Hong Kong the year previous to 77. And the uh, Miss Universe was held in Hong Kong in 1976. So we both went and spent a week inside the uh, Miss Universe pageant uh, organization so that we could see how things were done because we both were going to be part of the executive organizing committee when it would be held here the following year, which we did. And then at, uh, at the same time, Bob Barker was the uh, announcer for CVS at the time, and I was hired to be the local announcer of the Miss Universe. That's one of the things people remind me every so often. Your career is outstanding and amazing. Before we conclude, I'd like to ask you just briefly to highlight, as things change so much, what are the most interesting and notable tourist destinations in the Dominican Republic? It depends on what, what you're looking for. If you want to run away from the hard, cold weather, then you can come to the, to the east, to Punta Cana. You could go to the north, to Puerto Plata. You could go nearby here, Boca Chica, which is the closest beach to Santo Domingo itself. The city is on the coast, but it doesn't have any beach uh, within it. Uh, or you could come to the city of Santo Domingo just for, it, for its uh, colonial flavor, its great gastronomy, and the color that, that the city shows to, to, to anyone that visits. So it depends. We also have the mountains, which are very adventurous also and very colorful. So it depends what you want. But uh, the destination that has been growing more in the Dominican Republic in the last uh, 20, 25 years is Punta Cana in the eastern part of the country. The beaches are beautiful, tremendous. The hotels are nice. If you want to go a little bit into the past, you come to Santo Domingo. Get into the colonial sector. We have the oldest cathedral, the oldest hospital. Uh, the oldest university in the Americas is the University of Santo Domingo. Amazing. The University of Lima, Peru was number two and Harvard was number three. That's a quite a notable fact that the first university in the Americas was right here in Santo Domingo, the very first one. How interesting. That is correct and it's still going strong, of course. Sir, another interesting aspect with regard to tourism here in the Dominican Republic is medical tourism. And I'd like to ask you to share with our audience why many people from different parts of the world decide to incorporate tourism but also have some procedure done. Well, uh, we have a very special situation and it is that some of our hospitals and private clinics are now coming up to an advanced level that they can compete with the United States and other developed uh, countries of the world. So health tourism is a new uh, subject of work between the ministry and the private sector. They are both working closely in order to attract more foreigners coming 
A lot of people come from the uh, Caribbean islands that are nearby. Uh, a lot of people, both Dominicans and other Latin Americans, come from New York and Miami here looking for uh, medical uh, help. And uh, likewise, as we have so many tourists coming in, we realize that that is something that we must provide to the tourist that is enjoying his time, but humans as they are, they can develop illnesses and, and difficulties of health that we must treat while they are here. So we have been getting ready for that and we are advancing in that regard. There is a doctor, uh, a couple of doctors who are now uh, members of the board of the Hotel Association of which I am an advisor of that association that are very actively working on health tourism. And speaking of health, sorry to interrupt you on that thought, but it's so critically important for people who are suffering from various ailments to have intelligent scientific solutions. In the forefront of medical research and innovation and reversing the diseases of aging is life extension. And Bill Falloon wrote this book called Pharmocracy. He wanted me to give it to you. Wow. And it is about the challenges facing many people who want to reverse the diseases of aging with various procedures and research now in the forefront. I thank you so much. I have been reading recently on what's taking place, so this is a good thing. This is happening now for the betterment of the human race. I certainly agree with you, and I would like to introduce you to Bill Falloon at your earliest convenience. But before we conclude, give me a final message for our audience with regard to tourism. Well, I would say, if you haven't been to the Caribbean, it's about time that you do. And when selecting, don't forget that the Dominican Republic will give you the widest variety of natural beauty, mountains, rivers, lakes, beautiful ocean beaches, and the nice Dominican, open Dominican people that you will find here. So if you come to the Caribbean, you shouldn't miss the Dominican Republic. There must be a good reason why we are taking in the Dominican Republic the biggest lump of tourists that are coming to the area. And there is something not to be missed. Mr. Perez, a real pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Richard. I'll be right back. This concludes our special show for today on the Dominican Republic. I'm Paul Peretz. Thank you for being with us.